everybody. Welcome back to the Gulf Coast Texas High School Football Huddle brought to you by Citizens Medical Center. I'm your host, Chris Daly, and we have a great show for you this week. As you know, the huddle is brought to you by Citizens Medical Center. One of the very cool things about the medical center is the HealthPlex. Citizens HealthPlex is Victoria's premier medical fitness and wellness facility. If your goal is to improve your health, prevent disease, help you get strong and fit, or just be well, Citizens HealthPlex is for you. In fact, it's for me too. You'll probably see me and my wife there. Their 7,200 square foot facility has everything you need to maximize your enjoyment and get results. They offer all the space, equipment, and classes you'll ever need to get fit and healthy, including a large array of strength and cardio equipment, over 75 classes per week, a degreed and certified fitness staff offering professional instruction. Oh, and if you need to relax, try the steam rooms, whirlpools, dry saunas, and massage therapy. You want to lose weight? Hire one of the personal trainers to work with you one-on-one, and you're sure to see the results you want. Your journey to improved health, fitness, and wellness begins at Citizens HealthPlex. All right, everybody join me welcoming Mike Foreman from the Victoria Advocate. Mike, it sure is hot today, huh? Oh, boy, it is. I've been out at Riverside Stadium uh, checking out UHV doing their fall ball, although it sure doesn't feel like fall. (laughs) It feels more like summer ball. But, uh, yeah, it's hot, and, uh, gosh, who knows? Is this going to be the way it is until when, November, December? I think so. I saw next week we have 50s in the morning, but it's still over 90 in the afternoon. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty warm. So uh yeah. a lot of you know, hopefully those uh athletes are in good condition. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So so let's start with uh where you went last week. Okay, I went to Quero. Um it was kind of a as you know, a lot of teams took their bye last week. Yeah. So yeah. um I went to Quero and uh I I don't know if you know I I said this but uh, their quarterback Jackson Marie, who's had an outstanding season, uh, hurt his collarbone on almost the last play of that Belton game. Mm. So mm. he is out, from my understanding, at least until the last game of the regular season. Wow. So uh, yeah, that's a big blow for Quero. Uh, they they had a sophomore they brought up from the JV, Jace Guajardo. And he actually played pretty well. They uh, they came back in the second half and beat Harlingen, which coincidentally enough, Harlingen also lost its quarterback. So yeah. there were two teams playing each other without the starting quarterbacks. Yeah. And uh, but the thing that the Quail was able to do, they finally were able to do that they haven't been able to do is they actually tackled in the second half of that game, and yeah. uh, that. <laughs> That, to me, was the difference because it gave their offense, you know, a chance to score some points. So, uh, and, uh, you know, um, that's what I saw. We also sent uh, uh, Kevin Ostrom uh, went to, uh, he went and saw uh, Industrial and Tidehaven, Mm -hmm. uh, which, as you know, was a close game that Tidehaven was able to pull out. Yeah. And, uh so big win for them, and uh, you know I know ta- Industrial's still searching for that first win. Um, but uh, you know, gosh, you look at the teams they play, and I'm, oh yeah, it's it's been crazy. I I don't, you know, I think they could easily be a 500 team right now just by one or uh, two bounces. Yeah, I agree, and I mean. Uh, they caught Shiner um, just when Shiner was hitting his stride, it seemed like, mm-hmm. almost. And, uh, of course, Ty Damon's really good. I mean, uh, and then they still have to play. I think they play Van Black this week. So they're going to have to contend with Corey Austin. But, uh, they, you know, they still have East Bernard, and they still have uh, Rice Consolidated. Yeah, yeah, they still got a tough schedule. A lot of people, though, have overlooked the fact that 
that it was an overtime loss to freaking Edna that, you know, on a questionable yeah. call, they, they could easily have beaten Edna already this year. Yeah, that's that's right. And uh, so, I mean, they just have to hang in there. I mean, they can still make the playoffs. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's really what their focus has to be is like, look, you know, we can't control what's happened in the past, but we, we have the future in front of us that we can control. So uh, that's, I think, what the, the way industrial has to look at it. The other game, Gabe went and saw West. Uh, pretty much uh, they took a pretty impressive win over uh, Kerrville Tyvee. Um, mm -hmm. They're now 6-0, and first time in school history. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. I know, and they're, uh, they've got big numbers. Of course, we're going to find out this week because uh, they go to Alamo Heights. And uh, yeah. I think Alamo Heights is like ranked fourth in the state or something. Right. Yeah. And uh, we're going to find out exactly, you know, how good they are this week. Uh, I'm not saying they're not good, but, you know, we, I really don't know uh, about the competition they played yet. Other yeah, than, yeah uh, they're, Tybee, they're good. Tybee You're was right. the team. Yeah, they just haven't gone against the uh, top in the state. Yeah, so we'll see. That, that'll be an interesting challenge for Wes this week uh, right. to go on the road to play Alamo Heights. So, uh, yeah, that that's going to be uh, that'll be a uh, that'll tell us a lot, I think, about uh, about Wes. Mm -hmm. We've got we've got quite a few other ones. Uh, it's like uh, Platonia is another team in search of something, but I think they have a good opportunity this week. Yeah, and, and here's, you know, the interesting thing about that, they play Danbury. Yeah. Uh, Bloomington is playing Kennedy. If Bloomington beats Kennedy, mm -hmm. um, for all intents and purposes, it's going to make the playoffs. And uh, yeah. that would be the first time since 1998. Um, it would be amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, of course, mathematically, there are still things can happen, but looking at the realistic scenario of what's going on, you know, barring some of those top teams don't slip up. Um, yeah. Bloomington, if it wins on Friday, should make the playoffs. And that would be a big thing for Lane Shands and, you know, in Bloomington, I mean, my gosh, you know, what, 26 <laughs> years or something. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, and he, he said at the beginning of the year, I mean, he said, uh, we broke the district losing streak last year, and this year we mm -hmm. want to break that playoff streak. So, nice. uh, yeah, they've, uh, they, they've done a good job over there. And, uh, and the interesting thing I think I told you last week is that, uh, they only have one senior on that team. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they're going to be better next year. So, uh, you know, that's yeah, encouraging. Yeah. And I think if if there was a almost sure bet, I think it's Bloomington to make the playoffs this year, just because yeah, the I, district's so small and and you, you can't imagine they just fold up and go home right now after the season they're having. No, I I, I can't imagine either. And let's face it, Kennedy has struggled, yeah. and uh, you know they in a way I think uh, the schedule in a way benefited them because. Uh, they get the top teams at the end of the year instead of the beginning of the year. You know, if you would have flipped that schedule and said you played Ganado, Weimer, Schulenberg first, you could be 0-3. And, and, you know, who knows what happens from there, you right. know, as far as morale and things like that. But this way, they got the win over Danbury, and then they beat Flatonia. Now, they're, you know, they're, the morale has got to be really good. So uh, I think it's really worked out for Bloomington. Yeah, well, now, that, like I said, that whole district, because it's such a small district, you you get a win, you're in. After that, it's just positioning, seating. Yeah, and uh, now here's the thing, of course. Now, if Bloomington finishes fourth in that district, its first round would be against Refurio. Mm. So uh, you do not want to finish fourth. <laughs> but any first through third, I really feel like you have a good chance because I really think 
whoever finishes third is going to have three rivers in the first yeah. round. Now, three rivers is not bad, but it's not a monster. Right. So, uh, you know, that's something to look at. Um, we did have a big, a kind of what I thought was an upset in that district, and that's uh, Weimer beat, beat Schulenberg. Uh, oh, yeah. That uh, kind of surprised me. Um, that kid, Jaron Fisher, who ran for like over 200 yards in that game, um, and uh, I was speaking to uh, Coach, uh, you know, Coach at Weimer, Wade, and mm -hmm. uh, Wade told me that uh, – that uh, he had, he had been out with a concussion, and he came back last week and had a really big game. So yeah, Coach Wade Griffin was telling me that, and uh, they have to they have Ganado this week. So yeah. I'm I'm kind of curious because uh, you know Weimer one runs a slot T, and uh, that's I'm sure they're going to be their philosophy against Ganado is going to be. Uh, Let's control the ball and keep them off the field. Are you ready to take your game to the next level? Whether you're an athlete, coach, or just someone striving for more success in life, the Winner's Workshop is your secret weapon. Yes, this award-winning course has transformed thousands of lives, teaching the game-changing principles of sports psychology that Fortune 500 companies, coaches, and top performers all use to win. The Winner's Workshop, subtitled How Sports Psychology Can Make You a Champion, is now available on CoachTube for a fraction of the original $499 price. The Winner's Workshop will help you master focus, mindset, and breakthroughs to make you a champion. Click on the link in the show notes or head over to LoneStarGridiron.com and click on the ad today to unlock your full potential. Let's control the ball and keep them off the field. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, Which is going to be almost impossible to do with, with that yeah, huge speed of Donato. Yeah, I but, think it, they're going to have a hard time, you know. But their goal, I'm sure, is to make some first downs, you know, yeah. keep them off the field as much as they can. And uh, whether or not they can do that, I don't know. You know, Donato is, is really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I think I was mentioning last week, I think Donato's the the most team speed I've seen at that level ever. I mean, from top to bottom. Right. Yeah. They've got no doubt. So, uh, yeah, some, some, uh, you know, we're pretty much like this week almost, uh, in district play. I mean, uh, yeah. almost all district play, uh, you know, so we're getting down to it right now. Yeah, definitely. And I saw El Campo had a good win against Giddings. They're about to hit into district. And, uh, again, that's not an easy district either. No, they go to Beeville, which Beeville, you know, has been up and down. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out. And then uh, you got Bay City and Floresville, and then Calhoun has to go to Lavernia. And mm. that'll be interesting. That's the one game I'm really kind of looking at. Because right. I think that'll tell the tale as to how good Lavernia is and, uh, you know, is Calhoun uh, back, you know, yeah. have they gotten over their struggles. And uh, we'll see about that when they go up to Lavernia. You know, another district uh, we were talking about, Edna, Edna mm -hmm. is at home against Mathis. I really, you know, of course, you know, with Edna, like we say, we, who shows up? But, uh the game in that district is interesting. Is Goliath's going to Corpus to play London, right. and uh, right now they're both two and zero. Oh. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see if London can uh, can hang with Goliath. That'll be a kind of interesting thing. Yeah, Goliath is to me is still a mystery. I, I know they're a good team. They've had some quality wins, but they also have had some times where they don't look like they're living up to expectations. So I, I'm still unsure about them. Yeah, I think um, we'll see. I mean, I know they're, believe me, I know they're good up front. Um, yeah. 
And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll go occasionally, they'll go from the slot T to the, uh, slot T to the, uh, to the spread. They kind of right. switch back and forth sometimes. But, uh, yeah, this will be a good re- indicator. You know, if, uh, yeah. Goliad takes care of business and, uh, I think then we're looking, looking ahead to that showdown with Edna. Yeah. And, and we may have talked about this earlier in the year, but I think I've seen a lot more of that uh, team switching back and forth between things like a slot T or a veer and a spread, whereas it used to be you were one or the other, but now they've got to keep those defenses guessing. Yeah, and I guess um, a lot of times that, you know, I guess the, the first thing you want to do is uh, take advantage of your of your talent. I yeah. mean, uh, if you get the speed and everything, then obviously you want to spread people out. But if you're more of a, a physical team that maybe doesn't have the speed, yeah. then I can see you running like a power eye or even a uh, veer or a slot T or something. So, yeah, and and, you, and used uh, to, you used to see that per season, depending on personnel. Yeah. But now you're seeing it within the season. You're seeing them switching, which has been surprising. Yeah, I, I'm, I wonder about that, too, because uh, my, my question about that, and I know Goliath does it, is uh, can you master either one? Right. You know what I mean? If you're switching back and forth, I mean, uh, you know, can you can you be efficient in both? I mean, uh I know you're trying to match up and put yourself in the best position, Mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, it's better if you're running one thing, um, you know, it's better. Although I thought uh, when I was at Tide Haven last week, David Lucio said something very interesting to me. He said, when you're really good, then all you have to do is do what you're good at. Right. And he said, but if, if you're not that good, you have to change and keep people off balance. Yeah. So, and that made a lot of sense. You know, if you've got the, 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 the team, the talent and whatever, then you're just going to go line up and say, okay, stop us. Right. But if you don't, then what you need to do is keep teams off guard so yeah. that they, they really have to, aren't sure how they have to prepare for you. And, uh, and then again, that, that brings in the in-game adjustments. You Mm -hmm. know, how do you adjust to what a team is doing? Because everybody, well, almost everybody, unless a team is really good, like we said, is probably going to come out every week with a few new wrinkles. Sure. And, uh, and you know, unless you've seen that, you may not have practiced against it. So that means you've got to be able to, you know, kind of adjust on the fly to what the other team is doing. Yeah, I also think the average high school football athlete is smarter than they were back in my day. Because I I think of my teammates, you know, and we ran the veer, and Uh we screwed that up most of the time. (laughs) (laughs) I can't imagine switching offenses and switching up on defenses you know, but the kids today, I think, are more advanced. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they, a lot of them do. They, they're able to uh, to make that adjustment. And, uh, you know, I, I then again, it's just, uh, to me, it's all, it's all about reps, you know. Yeah. The more you do something, the better you're adjusted to it. And uh, Teams that get adjusted, you know, then you're playing faster because you're not thinking all the time. You're just reacting. Right. Right. And, uh, yeah, that's a big thing. I mean, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what, what happens with some of these teams. Like, uh, you know, I mean, I, that's what I like about Donato. I think Coach Irvin over there does a, a m- remarkable job of, of during the year, you know, they run basically the same, but he makes little adjustments, you know. Mm-hmm. He'll throw a wrinkle here or there. He'll do something a little different that keeps teams off balance. And uh, to me, that's, you know, that's a big deal because, uh, you know, not only are they good, but they also can can keep teams, you know, kind of 
from getting used to what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's always big. Definitely. So, so are you heading to Lavernia this week? No, I'm not going to Lavernia. That's too far. Um, <laughs> I'll either go to Quero, their opening district against Rockport Fulton, or mm-hmm. else I'll go up to Ganado for the Weimer game. Um, uh, yeah, that that might be interesting, just because I haven't seen Weimer play, and Weimer surprised me against Schulenburg. Yeah, that's why I just don't, like I said, I'm not sure if they can match up with Ganado, but uh yeah, we're we're gonna see about that. I know I'm sending Kevin to uh to Bloomington and Kennedy because uh you know, we wanna be there in case uh in case that happens. I mean, yeah. uh even though mathematically they hadn't clinched, but for all intents and purposes they win yeah. that game they're gonna be in. And uh is that one in Kennedy or Bloomington? That's in Bloomington. Nice. And uh both east and west this week are on the road. Um, I'd like to really like to have someone at that Alamo Heights game, but, uh, uh, you know, Gabe, if Gabe had been here, we might have sent him. But, uh, yeah. uh, he's enjoying the beaches in Barbados right now, so, uh. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, really. I really feel sorry for him, but, uh, yeah, so, but yeah, but, yeah, so we're into it now, Chris. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. We're, we're going to see, you know, these next couple of weeks. Uh, it's getting down the cases. So, uh, um, you know, I'm really uh, curious to see where this thing goes. Yeah, we're not we're not quite to the win or go home, but we're, we're to the win or don't go past the end of the season. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what we're at, and uh, we're pretty much – going to find out like who's the real contenders and who's not right well cool mike uh once again i want to thank you for all your great information hopefully you can get you some water stay hydrated and stay cool (laughs) yeah okay chris you too stay cool Listening to the Lone Star Gridiron Sports Network. Hey, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I want to thank Citizens Medical Center for bringing you the Gulf Coast Texas High School Football Huddle. Please take a second to share this show with your friends and family. Like and subscribe on any major podcast platform iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, wherever you find podcasts you will find the Gulf Coast Texas High School Football Huddle. I'm your host, Chris Daly, and I'm hoping to see you at the game.